All right, so I am back with the SSH Honeypot project. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking off where I left off in the previous video, adding some more advanced features and making this honeypot more intuitive from a user's perspective. So with that being said, let's see what version two, the advanced features of this honeypot are going to include before we get into the crash course, which will be in the next video. All right, so up on my development environment here, VS Code, as you can see, I'm looking at my readme file with the future features uh, list that I had left off with last time. You can see that the following feature sets are what I'm going to be developing in this video. And, and you may be wondering, why even create a video like this? And that's really to show you my development process, specifically when it comes to adding on or being iterative in your approach. Overall, when it comes to writing scripts, programs, applications, it's all about iteration, just getting started with something small and slowly by slowly, you can build momentum into something that is much bigger. So in these future features, I'm going to be doing a few foundational things. First, I'm going to be adding the tarpet functionality to the SSH banner. Um, what this will do is trap the individual or bot into that terminal session, and they're gonna have to basically exit out of that terminal in order to reset the connection. Um, so that's just a way to trap the bots or the hackers. Next thing I'm going to be doing is uh, expanding on my protocol capability offering. So right now, just as is SSH, I'm going to be adding an HTTP web server. It's going to impersonate the WP-admin or WordPress admin login page to collect username and passwords there. I'm also going to be adding a little bit more interactiveness, I guess, I, uh, basically building out a few little dashboard panels to showcase what kind of credentials are coming in IP addresses and visualizing that. So with that being said, these are the features I got to do and I have a lot of development and I have literally no idea what I'm doing, but that is the fun of these projects. And so let's get moving on to the tarpit functionality, trying to trap those hackers in their shell sessions. Before beginning my next sprint of work on these advanced features, I had already implemented my tarpit functionality into the SSH honeypot and I didn't record what I did. So a quick overview. A tarpit is a security mechanism designed to slow down or delay the attempts of an attacker trying to brute force logins into your terminal or SSH session. There are several ways a tarpit can be accomplished and the most popular method is by sending an endless SSH banner. I implemented the tarpit functionality by using the time module in Python, which would send a character every five seconds to keep the connection alive. Now the SSH banner size was also multiplied by 100 times to exponentially expand the entire size of the SSH banner. And really the only way to get out of these sessions is by closing the terminal window. You can't use control C, Q, exit. No keywords are going to work. You have to just exit out of the terminal. So it's kind of a really annoying feature and it kind of traps that pot into the session. Next was the new HTTP based web server honeypot with a login page, which would collect those credentials. So using the popular Python flask library, Library, I provisioned a new web server serving static HTML files. I decided to use the login page that would impersonate the standard WordPress login or WP admin login page, as WordPress is the most popular CMS on the web. Leveraging ChatGPT to lay out and style the WordPress admin login page, I played around with how to make the basic functionality serve a static HTML file with Python Flask. And after learning about how Flask serves web pages and handles those functions, I was able to to get a test environment spun up for the web honeypot collecting those credentials. Okay, so after a few hours of playing around with how I was going to implement my HTTP or web-based honeypot into the uh, main SSH program, originally I had attempted to add it so that you could run both of these scripts at once, meaning you could run SSH and the HTTP honeypot. So after some time about thinking about how I was going to implement it, I decided that uh, I was going to just make it a single use honeypot. So instead of you know having two at the same time, you're just having one run, but you can of course use systemd or anything alike to run multiple of the same Python file with SSH and web honeypots. And so that is what I did. Uh, so adding this functionality into 
um, the main.py file was relatively easy. And now this honeypot is a little bit more extensible. I could go out and add more protocols such as RDP or Telnet and make it even more extensible. But for the time being, this is where I'm gonna keep it at. So if I actually go and uh, look at my Python file, one construct I did try to reuse in the HTTP based honeypot is the fact that you can describe or uh, designate a username and password explicitly. And if not, then it uses the default credentials. So here, as you can see, uh, with the main.py, I'm running on port 5000 and I'm just using hi hi. And if I proceed to add this, it's just gonna run on my local host here. Um, you're going to see that it's running on port 5000. And if you do hi hi, it's going to send you to this link. I'm gonna add the debut dial logo. Of course you have to. Without designating explicitly that username or password, it's going to use the hard-coded credentials in the script. So now I am able to have two different types of honeypots and it's capturing that information and I'm able to run it within one script here in main.py. The next step is creating a basic dashboard. So I've never done this before. What my plan is to do is to provision another Flask app that's going to run on an HTML page. And I'm probably going to use matpoitlib or there's another variant called Seaborn to create some very basic uh, graphics or dashboard panels, which are going to read from the um, public log files, cred, CMD, and the HTTP audit logs, and just basically visualize which IP addresses are pinging that particular port and you know where they are going from. I wanted to add some basic graphics to visualize simple functions on the data being collected, such as the top 10 usernames, passwords, commands, and country geolocation by IP address based on my data coming into those files. I initially started with the idea of generating PNG files, passing the data to be parsed in Python Pandas data frames, which are basically just little tables, and generating PNG bar charts using matplotlib and Seaborn for styling. I would host these PNG-based graphics up on Flask. Implementing the idea of modularity from my last hookup with the HTTP-based honeypot, I created a dashboard parser file with the various functions to parse the data. I created a top 10 calculator which would take a pandas data frame, remember that's just the table, count the number of occurrences, and return that as a data frame file. I also wanted to look up the geolocation based on the IP address. So I uh, looked up a public API I could use. Lean Talk API was the one I found. It would take an IP address and return the country code in the URL. Using the requests Python library and data manipulation with JSON element returned, I was able to have a new data frame with the IP address and their associated country codes. Now I had realized that you know serving all of this on Flask with an HTTP based honeypot also running a corresponding with it would just be very inefficient and the dashboard wouldn't be interactive. It's just static PNG files. So after some time playing around with the various PNG based bar charts, I decided to look for an additional library that could maybe support some more extensibility with the bar charts. I happened to find Python Dash, a graphics library managed by Plotly. I gave it a try and after reading through the getting started docs and working on building a very basic dashboard, I decided this was a library I was going to use for my dashboard. And so I liked how the graphics were interactive, they were extensible, and there's a lot of styling. So once again, using ChatGPT and documentation, I created a basic wrapper function, which would take the data being parsed from those Python pandas data frames and build basic statistics bar chart graphics. Python Dash has a few enterprise-based offerings for their styling as well as community supported versions. And listed in their community supported version section, I found Python Dash Bootstrap, which comes with 20 plus default themes. I decided to go full dark mode, you have to, and so then I used the cyborg theme. Now, implementing the dark theme was a bit more challenging than I thought. The dashboard elements weren't picking up the theme elements. And after playing with the various class names, declaring them, wrapping the bootstrap to find Python methods in HTML div tag, I finally got something to work. And all of this made me realize I suck with general data science, front end, anything that has to do with styling. Luckily, we do have LLMs to help us nowadays, but yeah, I'm glad I'm in security for that reason. Okay, so after many, many hours sitting behind Visual Studio Code, I have developed this small dashboard here in dark theme mode, and I have completed this section of the video. The 
Really, the challenge for me was actually designing these elements. It was made easy with Python Dash, but uh, there was a lot of nuances with getting this data into the dashboard format. Um, and so after some time, I have successfully completed my entire honeypot project here. I had accomplished most of what I was looking for with the project. The final steps were to organize the entire application layout. I created a HoneyPie file, which would be the main interface file, and created files to support the various functions. I created a little logo in Photoshop and updated the README so that I could remember how this thing worked in six months as I have the memory of a tiny little pea. My final step was to deploy this to a VPS, and using Hostinger, I cloned my repository repository, downloaded the Python dependencies, and set up the honeypot file. And I was finished. That was, that was it. Okay, so like that over the last uh, week and a half here, I have finished the official honeypie honeypot project written in Python. All of the instructions are in the readme uh, in the GitHub repository if you want to go out and provision your own instance of HoneyPie. Uh, I'm going to be doing a quick demo to showcase the features that I've added in this video. Okay, so I am uh, SSH'd into my Hostinger VPS instance here. I'm going to showcase the web honeypot, the new feature of the SSH honeypot, and then a very basic overview of the dashboard. So starting out with the web-based honeypot, this is a brand new honeypot that I introduced. It runs on port 80. It's very basic. It impersonates a WordPress admin login page, but you can go out and create your own HTML templates and, uh, and, and basically have honeypot or use those instead. So if I go ahead and click enter here, you're going to see that it's running on my public IP address. And if we actually go to the browser, uh, what you're going to see is a very basic WordPress login page. Uh, and I decided to use WordPress because it's just so uh, ubiquitous on the internet. Based off of what the bot or the attacker inputs, it's going to return a specific page. So if I have admin admin, it's going to say, you know, invalid username and password, try again. Upon a successful login, which is uh, the default hard-coded credentials, you're going to see a redirect into the GIF of Rickroll. Why not? To override the default username and password that's hard-coded, you can supply the dash U and dash W supplied by your username and password that you want to accept in the web-based honeypot. Okay, so that's all for the web-based one. Moving on to the SSH honeypot. Now, I didn't change much from the last video where I created that emulated shell environment and I was able to handle the client connection with Perimico and sockets, uh, but I did add one little functionality and that is the tar pit. Now, this is a very fun little feature where if you want to quote unquote trap the bot or attacker, you can use a tar pit functionality. So by supplying a dummy username and password, you're going to see this uh, very slow SSH banner uh, go ahead and you know populate. And if you try doing like a control C or you know anything like Q, exit, quit, it doesn't work. So the only way to actually get out of this is to X out of your shell session. Uh, so it's just a very, a little annoying thing that you can do. The last feature is that web-based uh, dashboard, which is gonna visualize some of this data. So right now I don't have it where it dynamically actually um, is able to repopulate those dashboards as incoming data comes in. That is a definitely a future feature set. So basically every time you wanna visualize your data, you're gonna to have to run the Python 3 web app.py file, and then it will generate those statistics based off of that point in time. Uh, so uh, when running this honeypot, what you're going to see is a small little dashboard. Uh, and I, you know, it's not very complex. Um, it's basically just showing you the top 10 usernames, passwords, as well as uh, commands and um, you can also get intelligence data. Uh, now you can see that there's this no country panel defined. There is a feature in HoneyPie where you can add an IP address geolocation lookup and it will populate that in a dashboard bar chart if you wanted to see like the top you know, 10 countries coming in uh, based off of IP address. And really that creates what we've created as the Honey Pie project. And I'm really excited to continue to modularize or, or create new Honey Pots, as well as um, Dockerize this entire application because right now it's all kind of monolithic in a way that it's uh, produced. But this is iteration two of the Honey Pie project 
very fun to do and I'm going to let these honey pots sit out on my hosting or VPS and see what I can pick up if anything. So um, this has been a really fun project and yeah, that's basically it. I really enjoyed the process. There's a lot more advanced features that I could do to actually make this project legitimate. Um, but in the next video, I'm going to be creating an entire crash course for how you can create this particular instance of the honeypot right now. Uh, and if you are interested, please consider subscribing for that crash course as well as, you know, other series that are going to happen. Uh, I really do enjoy uh, showcasing projects that I'm working on on this channel. So uh, until the next time, have a good day. Everything's out on that GitHub repo. And um, yeah, that was a fun project.